This was a very personal movie for all of us. It's a, you know, we, we really went to the jungle and all the struggle that you saw. Boulders were falling off these cliffs. Ah, yeah, we almost that? died. Yeah. In the, from the, <laughs> and, uh, but that we weren't was, in that, that day, that huh? The day after we, 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 we lost the entire set, which yeah. is still what? floating down some river. We start hearing some, like, we hear this, like, sound that's just like, 600 <clears> feet above our head, this, like, <clears throat> then I turn my head and I look through the door and I see the entire crew, all of the Thai people, it's like in a horror, like in a, in, a, in a disaster film. They're looking up like this, and they're going, ah! <laughs> and a dream. Right here. Indonesia. That's where we'll find the gold. I knew the writers, Masset and Zimmerman. Um, I had known them from TV. They'd worked on Friday Night Lights. They were really good writers. And uh, I liked the idea of today telling a story without judgment of just the kind of people that I knew that felt like the backbone of our country. And, and, and to try to get a true portrayal. This is one of three scripts that I've read in 24 years that the first time I read it, I said, I have to and I know this guy inside out. He was my dad and who my dad dealt with in different shady business deals <laughs> when I was growing up through my teens. We would travel around, my dad was in the oil business, which was, it went bottomed out in the early 80s and he was trying not to go bankrupt. So we, he would take me on the road with him to go collect. So you bring your 12 year old son to collect, maybe you can shame the guy into paying you. I just, I just met these people and I saw my dad at times, he was a guy, things were not going well, business was not going well, but he wasn't gonna go bankrupt and he'd throw his legs over the side of the bed every morning and say, oh, today's gonna be the day. Kenny, look, we got a gold mine. 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 We're never gonna have a path to the American dream through the front door. They were always going to have to sneak in a window on the side of the house to get to the American dream or sneak in the back by conning their way in it, um, selling their way, how it was going to work. That was something that like Stephen and I talked with a little bit where it was like, oh, I'm doing an adult movie. It was really interesting for me in particular to get to play a character who was not kind of one way or another. There was an implied complexity within her because of of her relationship with Kenny Walsh. And it's like, how is this person and that person together? I have to say, like, the thing just I want to say about Bryce as an actress is that, you know, like, people talk about, like, realness, you know, or the ability to watch someone think on camera and have it be interesting. I had had, you know, endless conversations with the studio <clears throat> and everyone asking me, like, why does she take him back? You know, like, and I, you guys don't even know this. Like, I got asked this question, like, a thousand times, you know? Like, no, they don't, I, we don't understand, you know? And, and I was like, I just, I bet, because she loves him, love, you know? Man. And she's always loved him, and she's never stopped loving him, because it's that kind of love. And we got to that shot that day. I'm looking through that camera, through that screen door. I'm watching this monitor, and I see her appear, and I watch her eyes shift down, and then she looks back up at Kenny, and I was like, why is she taking back? That's why mother <laughs> <laughs> The story and the, char and, and, and the character of Mike Acosta is that he's told from the point of view of his memories, you know? So it was very interesting for me to explore and to humanize, uh, to make, to try to make real a character that lives in the memories of another character. Where do you think Mike Acosta is these days? Last, he, I heard he was seen in Rome eight years really? ago. Really? It was in Italy. <clears throat> well, that's what we heard. And um, what about Kenny or, or David? Um, do we know how David, he ended up? He died. I don't know. David, yeah, was living in a, his own prison of a castle in the Bahamas. The Bahamas. You've, you've undertaken big physical transformations before, um, you know, for Dallas Buyers Club right. most recently. The putting on 45 yeah. is a lot more fun than taking off. The I was going to ask. <laughs> yeah. um, how, how did you do it? And Cheeseburgers and beer. <laughs> Sounds great. And chicken at the same time. We had had a fat suit made for him, and. Um, and we looked at it, and, and you know, in that point, he was like, he goes, man, I've been, I've been drinking beer and having milkshakes for breakfast. I think I got this covered. And <laughs> <laughs> he was like, we got enough time. He's like, I'm willing to, I am willing to go for it. And, uh, 
And he did. I'd see him at the hotel in the morning. I swear to you, two cheeseburgers, a beer, wow. and a milkshake. Was it a hair piece, or did you actually shave your head? No, the hair was shaved, and then it was a little bit of hair on 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 hair piece on top. I sent my mother a photograph <laughs> of him from the set. Like I just snapped one, and I sent it to my my mom in Kentucky, and she said, and she wrote me back, and I could just hear her and her voice. She said, "Oh, honey, what have you done to that beautiful man?" <laughs> You know, once you decide to do something, it's always there. It comes up in weird ways. You're having dinner, someone says something to you, and all of a sudden you say a line that's similar to the way you said it in somewhere else, and you go like, Rrr. Unlike a lot of actors, I'm not ever seduced by the part. 